Hi and welcome to Capacity TV. I'm glad to be joined today by Shadi from Bix. Shadi, welcome. Thank you. So I just wanted to kickstart it with what are the challenges? What are the key challenges in the marketplace at the moment for content providers and network operators? Content providers and uh, network operators um, are facing uh, new challenges from their enterprise customers. Uh, th those customers are uh, using now more and more uh, public IP in order to uh, transport information between sites and get connected to the cloud. Uh, however, uh, they are still expecting a, a fairly high level of quality and some guarantees which are very difficult to uh, uh, provide over public IP. So their uh, operators need to find new ways of uh, serving them. Next to that, um, there is an explosion on the uh, traffic volumes that is uh, driven by uh, a lot of uh, uh, extra video content that, that is running around on, on the um, uh, transport side. Uh, and also a different way of doing business with uh, uh, IoT uh, and 5G coming around, generating new use cases that uh, need to be supported uh, properly. And finally, um, uh, the uh, advent of uh, cloud, where in fact a lot of the uh, processing is done uh, in the cloud and uh, enterprises rely on that more and more. So having direct access to the cloud becomes also um, a very important concern. So in order to do that, um, uh, to handle all of these uh, new challenges, the operators and uh, the content providers need to adapt their offering. And they also need to rely on their suppliers to uh, provide the proper support uh, for, for these uh, challenges. That's great. Um, but what you mentioned enterprises there and um, talked about IP connectivity. Um, so how, how, how are we kind of ensuring that reliability for that kind of quality of, of, that, of that connectivity? So um, basically enterprises are looking for end-to-end uh, -end quality guarantees uh, and um, uh, for uh, guarantees on uh, intent which uh, today is, is not foreseen in the public IP um, mode of operation. Uh, and therefore, uh, the suppliers need to uh, be able uh, to, to uh, organize around those requirements while uh, keeping the price similar to what um, they, c they offer on IP transit. Uh, of course, the easy way would be to go back to dedicated uh, channels, but the, the cost structure there is not what the enterprises are looking for. So uh, in order to do that, you need to provide first the, the way to measure it um, uh, and, uh, and to report it to the customers in order to prove that the enterprise customer is getting what he's paying for. And next to that, uh, you also need to be able to manage the traffic flows uh, efficiently and to have that direct connectivity uh, between uh, the networks. Uh, so this is um, uh, what needs to happen, and this is where the wholesale providers uh, can uh, help the um, uh, operators uh, by growing the, the peering connectivity where the, the traffic flows are much more uh, controlled, and also by doing uh, in-network control. Okay. You mentioned the explosion of, of traffic and the, and the sort of data that's, that's happening in the marketplace at the moment. Um, talking about content localization, mm -hmm. I mean, what, how much of an important role is that sort of having in, in, within that sort of area of, of, of traffic explosion and surge? There is a bit of a balance um, that is constantly happening be between the explosion of the end user requirements in terms of traffic and that, that explosion is, is not going to stop, it's, it's just going on. Um, however, if you, if you think about um, the operators and the wholesale suppliers who have to transport that, that on their backbones, they mitigate that effect by having the caches and the CDNs. Uh, and the question is, how far does that mitigation compensate for the traffic explosion? And uh, what we see is that um, in, um, in mature markets, uh, the, the content uh, providers are able to deploy those caches fairly easily, but there is a minimum volume requirement in order to justify the expense. And also, if you look at the cloud providers, they deploy their infrastructures in several locations, but those are very big investments, so they, they need to rely on um, uh, a, a certain level of stability, both political and uh, economical. And uh, therefore, they're not able to do that deployment everywhere in the world. So to serve those countries where uh, the volumes uh, are n not that high uh, uh, relatively to what's happening in Europe and in the US, 
or where political uh, stability is still an issue, their backhaul providers will still have quite a lot of work to do and, um, and there the, 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 the volume growth is still very significant. So, so looking specifically at the subsea market, um, you know, and the traffic flows with, the, with that, obviously we've, we're seeing a lot more kind of hub activity, particularly with like Marseille and, uh, and New York and, 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 thing, and places like that around the world. Um, I mean, what's going on in that sense, in, in that specific um, kind of field of our industry? Well, so um, if you take Marseille as an example, um, it's, it's a perfect example of uh, uh, concentration and, and, and very fast growth over the last uh, five, uh, five years. And um, it's, of course, it's the hub effect that plays the, here at, at full scale. So the, the, more, uh, the more cables are coming to Marseille, um, the more it's interesting for the next cable to be there because it's so easy then to connect and to exchange traffic. But that model has some limitations because at some point the, um, the hub becomes so big that uh, you start to have uh, a, a big risk in terms of diversity. So in order to mitigate this, there, there are two things that can be done. First, you can improve the connectivity to the hub. Uh, like, uh, so for example, Marseille has traditionally been connected on two or three routes. Um, and this is becoming a bit too little. So uh, adding routes to fan out of that location is one way of mitigating the issue. Bix has done that by connecting uh, uh, Marseille and Paris with a completely new route with a fairly low latency. Uh, it, was, it was live um, earlier this year. And um, another way of doing that is finding other entry points in the continent um, that, that allow to connect the major uh, locations for uh, internet exchange, like uh, in Europe, it, it's uh, Frankfurt, London, and Amsterdam, um, uh, and allow them to connect them through an alternative entry point. And this is uh, typically what is happening today with Italy, which is becoming a very significant entry point next to Marseille for traffic coming from the Middle East and from Asia. Again, there we have been uh, very keen to not miss that boat, and we are uh, able to provide connectivity back from Bari, where there is a major cable coming in, uh, and from uh, Sicily, where most of the cables are landing. And we do that with, um, with partners in Italy in order to connect them uh, back to, to our uh, network in, in the rest of Europe. Excellent. Well, Shadi, thank you so much for joining us today on Capacity TV. It's been great to hear about BICS and, and what kind of um, plans are happening at the moment. It was a pleasure. Thank you.